That's the primary use case in, in terms of the smart farming, where you're taking those productive assets that you already would have on Vesper, and you're kind of supercharging them on Metronome, and you're hodling better. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the DeFi Podcast. I'm DeFi Dad from Fourth Revolution Capital. Uh, today, we'll be talking with the co-founders of Metronome, which is a sister protocol to Vesper Finance. Vesper was one of the earliest protocols to build single token deposit vaults with automated DeFi strategies routing through some of the top DeFi protocols. If you were around last DeFi bull run, you probably already know Vesper. Uh, it's very similar to Yearn Finance. So the team has roots that actually go all the way back to 2010. Jeff Garzik, one of the co-founders, was originally a Bitcoin Core contributor. So this team specifically has adopted some newer views on what is the most compelling product market fit for DeFi users and who exactly we should be building for in the next major crypto market cycle. Uh, and so we'll also cover their newest product called Metronome, which is a multi-collateral and multi-synthetic protocol where users can deposit uh, collateral such as ETH or wrapped Bitcoin, stable coins, as well as more productive assets, which allow you to earn yield and Vesper finance while also uh, leveraging them to potentially mint synths or earn additional yield with a leveraged position. Introducing Mantle. Mantle is the first modular layer two solution built for hyperscale dApps. We separate execution, data availability, and transaction finality into separate layers. This allows us to increase transaction throughput while keeping fees low and maintaining the security and decentralized nature of Ethereum. Join us in building on Mantle Testnet today and be a part of the future of Web3. Whether you're a trader, farmer, analyst, or newbie, you can trade smart with KyberSwap, the OG decentralized exchange and aggregator on 13 chains. Swap at the best rates, farm with real yields, set limit orders, use their proprietary trading and AI tools with the best UX in DeFi, securely and permissionlessly. Get better rates, better opportunities, better alpha, and a better trading experience. Trade smart now at kyberswap.com. Gtrade by Gains Network is a decentralized leverage trading platform, allowing users to synthetically trade crypto, forex, stocks, and commodities with up to 1,000x leverage. Gtrade is live on both Polygon and Arbitrum, with over 30 billion in all-time trading volume and nearly 50 million in vault liquidity. The platform has consistently been among the top earning protocols, with seven-figure monthly revenue and a net deflationary token. Gtrade has become an on-chain staple for both traders and yield seekers. Check them out at gains.trade or by searching Gains Network on Twitter. So on that note, let's go ahead and introduce uh, two of the co-founders of Metronome, uh, Zane and Jordan. Uh, welcome to the DeFi podcast. How are you doing? Yeah, doing awesome. Glad to be here. Great. Thanks for having us today. Uh, actually, just before we got started here, uh, I was asking uh, Zane and Jordan, you know, do I have these dates right? How far back do you go in the space? Because for whatever reason, I thought that they got into crypto around 2015 and turns out it was closer to 2012, 2013. And this is, uh, for whatever reason, that origin story, it's something that we all share in common forever. Anyone who's in, into crypto, you know, will forever uh, define their start, you know, their, their like the year that they actually got into crypto um, as, you know, something that should be shared with everyone that you talk with in the space. So uh, maybe we can start then with a, a bit more about the origin story uh, for the two of you getting into the crypto space. So uh, Zane, Jordan, if either of you want to kick off, I'd, I'd love to kind of dig into how did you get into crypto in the first place? Yeah, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, for me, it actually started when I was in grad school. I was working on my PhD in bioinformatics. For those who are not familiar with bioinformatics, it is essentially data science in the biomedical biochemistry field. And I was in a computer science and algorithms course, and I was assigned an optional reading assignment. Optional reading assignment was actually the Satoshi white paper. Uh, I, of course, you know, took that optional uh, reading and I went home, 
read the white paper and I went in the next day and I said, I don't, I don't get it. And it was one of those things where it took me probably three reads, time sitting with um, my professor who actually was my advisor um, to really fully understand Bitcoin. To, uh, because I, when I read it the first time, I'm like, this, the, there's, this can't actually be how we can transfer money. Th there has to be something here. The double spin, all of that, I was trying to piece it all together. But once I read it, I knew I had to do something with it. So I immediately started uh, basically on the side, applying a lot of the same algorithms, a lot of the same things I was developing within bioinformatics to the Bitcoin network. It was basically my side project where I was trying to see, I was uh, finding um, clusters and whatnot within the network. And it was really cool for me to take all the algorithms I had developed and basically see if I could apply it to Bitcoin. Um, needless to say, I was immediately captured. I wanted to do more and I started to do this um, and tried to find ways I could be involved. I got involved with the Chamber of Digital Commerce right when uh, Perry and Boring started. I was living in DC at the time, I was going to Georgetown. And I then, basically all my free time was spent in crypto. I was doing more and more. And that was when I met uh, Matt Rozak. And um, shortly after I met him, he said, hey, I'm starting this company, turned out to be Block. And I left my PhD joined Block, and that was in 2016. Um, and from there, I was able to work and uh, lead a lot of the early enterprise projects that Block had. And then in 2018, we uh, started to work on um, more DeFi. Um, it was when we first launched Metronome. Metronome was launched um, as a um, set of four smart contracts originally. And then from there, we launched Vesper in um, 2021. And so have really been part of DeFi since the early, early days. Um, it's a really excited um, metronome. It was relaunched in August of uh, 2022. And it's really had kind of um, a, a long journey within DeFi. And so excited for everything that we are going to share today and um, what what... Uh, what to me, I feel, is really taking DeFi to that next level. How we can really think about the next chapter of um, uh, of DeFi and really just finance in general. Zane, do you want to share a bit more about how did you start working at, I, I assume it was the block, which is, by the way, it's BLOQ.com if you've never checked it out. Uh, but yeah, Zane, how, what was your start there? My origin... Um was back in the day when I was 15 years old uh, playing Minecraft. Um, I was invited to come play on this casino server. And the casino used this currency called Bitcoin. And I learned that there was this internet uh, money that you could gamble with. And no one asked you how old you were. Um, and I kind of got me hooked um and i pretty quickly started finding all the different ways i could uh earn bitcoin doing little micro tasks on the forums um writing articles uh testing sites anything i can do to get my hands on bitcoin so i could then go play and lose it in poker um and essentially over the years through high school and college i did more and more uh, more and more work in the crypto space, uh, all different kinds of writing mostly. Um, and, uh, right into COVID when I graduated college, um, I started, uh, working at block as a freelancer. I was doing technical documentation. Um, and I just kind of uh, more and more, um, wiggled myself into whatever the cool stuff was that they were working on. And, um, and now I'm here. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so the block, uh, I keep calling it the block, like like the block news, but block, B-L-O-Q. Uh, this is a team that focuses on building infrastructure and applications across everything from mining to DeFi applications to what we would all call the metaverse. Uh, you, you both have these, these like 
very um, familiar crypto native roots, uh, which, I, you know, no surprise starts with uh, Bitcoin. Um, before we start to talk about what led to building Metronome and like how we can use it as DeFi uh, users, uh, maybe we should talk just about like, what's this last crypto bear market been like for you? Like you've lived through many of these cycles and I'm, I'm wondering like, what's your perspective on, you know, what's changed or, or like what lessons do you take from the, you know, incredibly tumultuous year that 2022 was? Yeah, I think that the biggest thing in my mind is just the magnitude and um, where we are on the adoption cycle as well. Um, because where where we were when uh, I started to get involved in crypto, it was a very small fraction of people that even knew what Bitcoin was. And so when there was any sort of bear market, you didn't have as many people that were aware or um, it wasn't under the same microscope that it is today. And I think that with this last um, bear market, it, it's one where um, you have all eyes on our industry now and you have all you you have more critics now than you once did. Um, while I, it's always good, I'm one who has always tried to do whatever I can to uh, help onboard more people onto crypto. I think what we've seen, though, is there are now people who are fearful as far as what the future holds or are um, also maybe just tourists who are not really fully understanding what the technology is or what it can be. Um, but what I'm also seeing, which um, ha has been true since the early days, is you do have these people who are truly the builders, who understand the technology, understand what it means not for necessarily today, but what it means for 10 years down the road, what it means in 20 years, where it in they are the people who are still focusing on building out, who are still focused on how we can evolve, how we can build bigger, better, stronger for not just the next bull run, but the next um, it, for, for the next iteration in terms of just financial strength. Um, and that part is really cool to me. And that is a lot of why I, I love DeFi in general is just the technology that comes from it and the, just the innovation that we are seeing. In real world TradFi, there's a meme of things being zero interest rate phenomenons where like companies raise money and, and they shouldn't have existed. And it's because of a zero interest rate they were giving money out. Uh, I, I think in during the crypto bull market, it's similar in the sense that um, nobody, no projects are thinking about revenue and treasury and, and runway and like the the quantitative values of running a, a working business that can grow and scale um, within the ethos of crypto and in the ethos of fairness and ethics, you want to give as much value to token holders as possible, which is still true. That's always the case. But in 2020, 2021, people weren't as uh, skeptical or they didn't scrutinize the best way to do that. And uh, I know a lesson we learned and a lesson that many other projects signed was uh, you give out uh, immediate gratification, immediate rewards, and uh, people, traders will come in, take the rewards uh, and leave. Um, and I think that's something that was pretty commonplace in 2020, 2021. Uh, projects have a better understanding of, of being more, uh, almost more frugal with how they are using the resources that they have. Yeah, I think that's well said. Uh, I think we saw a lot of tokens, like the native governance token of a lot of protocols get rewarded. And I I am not ashamed to say, and I was the biggest proponent of it. I thought, you know, it was, it was genius at the time because there was such uh, an influx of new interest into the space and you could see the positive sum growth. Like, you, you are seeing lots of new protocols grow, um, just a tremendous amount of new capital enter the space. We went from like 500 million total value locked in DeFi in summer 2019 to we hit 1 billion in like, 
I think it was February 2020. And then we like skyrocketed to as high as like 250 billion, which is an inflated number because there were a lot of like newly created tokens in there that would eventually draw down a lot. But uh, yeah, I think these lessons are very healthy in crypto market cycles and it's it's going to lead to better protocol design, better incentive mechanisms uh, in terms of token rewards uh, in the future. Uh, so wh why don't we start to actually talk then a bit about uh, what is metronome? Can we just redefine it beyond what I shared in the intro? And I guess what prompted you all to start building metronome as what I would call a sister protocol to Vesper Finance? Yeah, sure. Um Metronome is a multi-collateral, multi-synthetic protocol and ecosystem. In really, the idea is that it's going to help users become uh, or gain more capital efficiency and really make their crypto work harder for them. And I, I think that the easiest way to see this is uh, if you go to the Metronome dashboard, you'll see that there are a number of uh, Metronome collateral options and uh, you have everything from your blue chip tokens to a number of productive yield bearing asset tokens and this is something that um, really it, it, I think is uh, great for users because up until very recently once you had yield that was kind of your final stop in DeFi you got you were able to achieve a point where you were earning yield and that was it Maybe you're going to try to find something that you could earn higher yield with that token, but it was kind of the last stop. Now, with Metronome, what you can do is you can take that yield bearing position and use that as collateral and then continue on your way and you can do more. So once you uh, deposit into Metronome, then you can mint a synthetic asset and you can do, um, after you do that, you can uh, use it in several different ways where uh, right now we have a metronome marketplace where it is a zero slippage swappage uh, marketplace where you can swap between the synthetic assets. And this, you can basically think of any reason why you may want to do this. This could be something where you are wanting to do more directional trading, but you're uh, wanting to keep that collateral. So all sorts of reasons why uh, you would want to partake in that. The other thing is, is that you can actually also, with the marketplace, you can actually acquire a synthetic asset on the open market. And by doing so, you can then swap through the marketplace to another asset and exit on the open market. This is something that can really come in handy if you are um, wanting to route through, let's say that you're wanting to go from USDC to ETH and uh, because of the zero slippage, you could actually have a better route going through the Metro marketplace than you would by just going through uh, one of the DEX options. Uh, so those are like just two really quick use cases for why somebody would want to just use one of the synthetic assets. But we're continuing to build out applications on top of the metronome synth protocol. And we just launched last week one of the applications, which is smart farming. And I'm actually going to pass it over to Zane uh, to walk us through more on the smart farming. By the way, for folks uh, listening to the audio only, uh, you can go to defidad.com. If you find the YouTube link or LensTube link to this, you'll see some of the screen sharing and screenshots to this. But uh, otherwise, we'll, we'll try to walk through this and, and talk through it really descriptively so you can understand just how these use cases work. Uh, Zane, yeah, can you walk us through what is smart farming and I guess how, how does this work in terms of the metronome protocol? Yeah, so there's this really powerful uh, notion for yield farmers where if they go through metronome, they take uh, their productive asset, whatever it is, we have a collection of uh, productive stablecoin positions, a collection of productive ETH positions, uh, and you can mint a synthetic USD or synthetic ETH against it. Our synthetic assets are uh, supported on the open market, as Jordan said. Uh, we have deep liquidity on Curve. 
And what a yield farmer can do is they can mint an asset, they can sell it uh, for more of that original asset, uh, route it back into that productive position. They could actually loop it over and over and over again and essentially take a multiplied position on the yield. So there's no, if they have an ETH position, there's no directional risk of, of the ETH going up or down in price. All they are speculating on is a multiplied exposure to the APY of that collateral. The difficulty, especially on mainnet, is that is a lot of work and that's a lot of gas to deposit, mint, swap, deposit, mint, swap over and over and over again. Uh, smart farming uh, abstracts this all out and gives users a one-click solution uh, to do it. And instead of spending hours and and hundreds if not thousands of dollars in gas and having to deal with all these different protocols you can do it all in metronome all in one click it's essentially a um a, a comprehensive uh user control panel where you select uh, whichever collateral asset um there's a slider that tells you essentially what multiplication you want to get to so uh, using the 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 collateral ratio of the asset, which uh, says how many synthetics you can mint against it, you can determine what your max multiplication is. Um, so you can slide it up, slide it down, set your slippage. It'll estimate your APY for you. Um, and one click, it'll uh, basically take your, uh, take your collateral, deposit it into this, this kind of uh, middleman contract. It'll mint as many synthetics as you need to get to the end state, swap all of them, and redeposit all of it into metronome. And essentially, by doing it that way, you don't loop over and over and over again. It's one mint, swap, deposit, and it's all done for you in one transaction. So in, uh, you know, when gas is normal, it costs like 50 bucks, which is still a lot, but that's to to uh, tap into a bunch of different protocols, and it's 50 bucks versus 500, 1,000. Um, and yeah, so it, it's basically a, a, a simple way for users to get the maximum yield potential uh, out of Metronome. I don't know for sure when, but I assume that Metronome eventually is going to move to uh, Optimism the way that Vesper Finance has. So, uh, you know, for those of us who love to use L2s and spend, you know, a few dollars on on gas, that that's something I would definitely look forward to. For anyone who holds a, a yield earning asset, some sort of, I'm going to call it just a productive asset. If, if I hold, uh, something like a, a Vesper vault filled with USDC or die or frax or Steph or our ETH by rocket pool or Coinbase ETH, th there's a very simple use case there of just borrowing, which is, I, I think still one of the killer use cases of DeFi. I'm holding something. I want to continue to hold it. And, you know, maybe I think ETH is going to go up over time or I'm earning ETH staking yield. Now I can take that asset and I can borrow against it. Uh, so anything else to cover there? Like that, to me, that's the power of the synths that we can mint with MS ETH, MS Bitcoin, or uh, MS USD. Yeah, I think that uh, something that comes to mind uh, as we're talking one of the uh, what we used to say a lot with Vesper is hodl better. We would uh, constantly say that Vesper was um, your your opportunity to hodl better because you're earning yield. Um, I think we're doing that once again with Metronome because you're taking those productive assets that you already would have on Vesper and you're kind of supercharging them on Metronome and you're hodling better. And so it's. Um, that's the primary use case in terms of the smart farming, where you can take the assets that you, uh, the productive assets on Vesper, and you can then route them through the smart farming, and then you can continue to earn more on those assets. Um, as far as the audience goes, it's interesting because Vesper, what we've seen, uh, does appeal to more of your conservative audience. We have uh, a w one of the really strong selling points for Vesper is every single one of our strategies is audited. Uh, we at this point have over fifty independent uh, audits, 
and uh, it's also really, really simple to use. It is something where um, it's something that even new DeFi users, uh, oftentimes they find it as their first application that they are going to interact with. Uh, from kind of that perspective to metronome, metronome is probably for a slightly more sophisticated user. It isn't a lot more complicated, but it, it has maybe one more step in terms of sophistication or um, it, com complexity. And so I think that Vesper appeals to um, the completely conservative crowd. Vesper, or Metronome appeals to more of the degen leaning side, but then we have a huge overlap between um, the Vesper and Metronome with the smart farming. So we are definitely capturing that middle ground in terms of, um, I think, just the broader DeFi audience who understand enough, like with Vesper, can deposit there, and then Metronome that is definitely more of the DGENs. I know, you know, during this bear market, uh, there are, you know, parts of my portfolio that you know, I, I thought about selling just because I needed the liquidity for X, Y, Z. You know, maybe it was because I wanted to buy another token or maybe it's because, I don't know, I have some bill due in, in my, in, in, the, in the real world and, you know, outside of uh, the on-chain digital world. And what's really powerful in DeFi is if I hold something like staked ETH that I want to continue to hold, like stake teeth is a good example of something like I never want to sell it. I just continue to try to accrue it and I, I have, you know, no intention of selling that. If I can borrow at low leverage, you know, maintaining a fairly healthy health factor, uh, then, you know, that that's a fantastic option for me. That said, not recommending anybody take on leverage. Obviously, everybody knows the uh, the downsides. When you're in a downtrend, uh, you never know where the bottom is, and you might potentially be liquidated if you don't continue to maintain that loan. But again, I think the crypto space, DeFi specifically, is all about allowing adults to do what they want when they want with their own money. And you know this this is a great example of an app that gives you really powerful use cases and allows you to be an adult and decide exactly what you want to do, whether you want to lever up Forex uh, in uh, like a, a staked ETH that is deposited in Vesper and continually earning additional yield while holding just more exposure to that. Like that that's, that's your choice. Uh, in terms of the smart farming though, uh, what are the risks that we should highlight? I think one of them I've already covered there. It's it's being liquidated potentially, but what are the other risks that we should consider? For smart farming, you have um, a like collateral, like mintage. So you have it in ETH based uh, collateral and a synthetic ETH, a USD based collateral and a synthetic USD. Um, in the Medgenome uh, platform, the synthetic assets are value one to one when it comes to assessing your your health. So. The risk of liquidation is if you have, for example, you have a, a, an SD ETH position and SD ETH DPEGs or USDC DPEGs. Um, when you're smart farming, you're multiplying your position. So the risk of DPEG becomes more pronounced. Um, if if you have no borrow or no mintage and, you know, USDC went down to like 90 cents a couple months ago. Uh, and it went back up. That wouldn't matter. But if you're looped up 5x through smart farming and USDC goes to 90 cents, um, you're likely going to get liquidated. In terms of the um, the synth side of it, the, the synthetic assets, you're entering and exiting through the open market. So um, the other uh, primary risk or consideration is how you're entering and exiting you want to enter your position uh when the peg is strong you're minting and selling when you uh when you loop into a smart farming position so you want to do that at or above peg and at the same time uh when you're exiting your smart farming position 
you are swapping your collateral back for the synthetic. You're buying the synthetic to refund your loan or refund your mintage. So you want to ideally uh, exit below peg. Um, if you do the opposite, if you enter below peg and you exit above peg, you could realize some percent losses. Um, and again, that's multiplied by whatever your uh, whatever multiplication you set for the, the loop. Um, there are other more kind of existential risks, um, like oracles are the big one that the, the big risk for virtually, um, any DeFi protocol, um, metronome uses Chainlink to fetch the prices of, of assets, the price of ETH, the price of, uh, USDC, um, as well as all of the different, uh, liquid staking tokens we support. So RE, CBE, um, STE, uh, Fraxy. If Chainlink fails, or if uh, someone is able to manipulate the Chainlink oracles, essentially what someone could do is um, convince Metronome, and because we're using Chainlink, also convince everyone else using those same oracles, like Aave, Compound, and you know whoever, not Compound, uh, but Aave. Um, they could convince Metronome uh, that um, a certain collateral is actually worth more than it is, and they could come in and they could deposit a bunch of inflated value tokens according to the oracle uh, in, in mint an excess number of cents and sell them. Um, or if there is some weird market turbulence and, and Chainlink misrepresents the value of an asset uh, below the price, a user who is using as collateral could get liquidated in that sense. Um, but the, those are like more existential DeFi risks Um we are dealing with blue chip assets on either side. It's it's mostly stable coins and ETH and and, and call them wrappers or or uh, derivatives of those assets. So uh, we're more insulated than um, a platform that is supporting certain long tail assets that might not have much open market liquidity and might have weaker oracles. Um, the other big existential risk is smart contracts. Uh, if, if there's some type of smart contract failure, if there's some hack exploit, um, like Jordan mentioned earlier, we're we're very serious um, about our security policy. Um, everything's audited. In, in the case of Metronome, um, we audited it, uh, Jordan, once or twice. Yeah, and we um we have two audits right now on the entire system, and everything new does continue to be audited. So it's not something where it's a one and done. Uh, all new code will be audited. Uh, it's just one of those policies that we have that we feel is very important, and so we take a very similar approach that we take in with Vesper when it comes to metronome. We have an immunify um program running which is essentially an open-ended bug bounty for white hats to you know find stuff and report it um our engineering team um, um, also you know are very thorough in their internal reviews and testing and smart contracts are are scary and new technology and you know people People have only been using Solidity for a handful of years, um, but it, as secure as you can get, we we are trying to be there. Uh, one last feature, actually, that, that we didn't cover. Uh, do you want to explain how the synth minting fee works? Because that, for me, as I was like reading through the, the documentation, I'm, I'm like, okay, there is a more predictable borrow rate or call it mint, uh, you know, fee that you're paying versus what, what I'm used to is variable rates on, on yes. most uh, platforms. So anyways, how does the 1% minting fee work? Yeah, so uh, we only charge what is effectively an, an interest rate. We call it a balance fee on the application. Um, it's 1% when you mint an asset and essentially it's streamed per second over the course of, of the year, that 1%. So if you mint... If you mint a hundred MSUSD and you hold it for a year, um, your your fee will be one MSUSD, and it gets added to your outstanding uh, mintage. So, if you minted a hundred, you come back a year and you want to pull your collateral, you're gonna have to repay a uh, hundred and one MSUSD essentially. And um, 
that um, compared to Abe Compound, uh, other lending uh, protocols, it's definitely a competitive advantage in the sense that um, if there's, for example, there's a ton of demand to uh, loop up on uh, SDE and, and the other liquid staking tokens on, on both Compound and Aave. Um, and because of that, there's more demand for ETH. And so the uh, interest rate to borrow ETH goes up and you lose the opportunity to multiply your APY. Uh, here, it's a predictable fixed rate. Um, it, it is dynamic in the sense that uh, the protocols um, by governance or otherwise can update those fees, but it's not happening in real time. It's not reflective of increasing or decreasing demand it's more so of a of a benchmark milestone update type deal yeah so a few other things to note uh i have previously done interviews with radiant capital and one of the things i love about radiant is the looping that you can do similarly here on metronome uh, but one of the factors you have to consider is they have really high borrowing rates because it's it's uh, a money market where the utilization of that uh, available liquidity drives up the interest rate. And so it's one of the many variables you have to keep track of to prevent yourself from being liquidated. Uh, another thing here that really stood out for me is that these are all real yields. Um, as of now, as of this recording uh, in uh, April 2023, it's April 26, 2023, uh, there's there's no sort of like additional uh, metronome token rewards or Vesper rewards. And so I love that because those could come, I guess, in the future. But it's nice to be working with real yields uh, because those tend to be more sustainable. Those tend to last longer. Uh, this really represents a lot of the improvements that I'm excited to see in DeFi uh, actually, if you haven't listened to the last episode of the DeFi podcast, it was with Radiant Capital. So I think this is very complimentary to continuing to talk about what are new uh, and better ideas, improvements to th the types of incentive mechanisms we want to see in DeFi. Uh, so why don't we wrap uh, here, but I'd like you to you know, maybe end with what's next for, uh, for Metronome? Uh, you know, can we expect to see any new collaterals added in the near future? Yeah, we are um, continuing to add more collaterals. And um, as we've been discussing, a lot of emphasis on these productive assets. Um, right now, a lot of the collaterals are ones that we are already supporting on Vesper. And um, we do intend to have uh, other uh, productive assets, seal bearing assets. So aren't necessarily supported on Vesper in the future. Um, so that's something that is very much on the roadmap as well as L2 support. Um, that's something that will be welcomed by, I, I think, everybody within DeFi as well as our team. Uh, and we're also going to um, start supporting more uh, synths as well. So, so more of the synthetic assets. One more point real quick is as Metronome and Vesper mature together, we have an interesting product offering for um, more emerging projects or tokens, um, where essentially uh, Vesper can use Metronome as a yield source. And for a token that might not have a way to earn yield on DeFi um, already, we can plug it into Metronome, we can loop it into Vesper, and we can essentially um, create its first sealed source. So we can enable uh, certain assets that are emerging or or projects that maybe aren't as intimately involved in DeFi uh, to get their first exposure into DeFi and allow their users to mint assets against it, um, earn yield and all that good stuff. Awesome. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's all about uh, making those tweaks, those improvements to you know, continually advance uh, the DeFi uh, ecosystem and, and onboard that many more new folks to the space. Uh, I want to remind uh, listeners they should uh, check out metronome.io if they want to learn more about the protocol. They can check out the app and all the documentation there. Quick reminder, of course, none of this is a recommendation or endorsement to use leverage or to invest money into any specific DeFi app or to buy any specific token. Um, we talked through a lot of the risks that uh, come with using DeFi, but 
uh, this is a great way for you to start to learn more about bleeding edge new applications like Metronome. And then uh, uh, lastly, Zane and Jordan, where should folks follow you uh, if they want to get in touch? Yeah, so um, please check out our website, um, metronome.io and then vesper.finance. Um, and then we have all the links to our Discord and Telegram there. Uh, and then please, uh, you can find us on um, our, on Twitter as well. And if you want to reach out to either one of us directly. Thanks everyone for tuning in. If you're a talented builder like Jordan and Zane, please consider reaching out to my team at fourthrevolution.capital. And for future episodes of the DeFi podcast, please subscribe at defidad.com. Mm-hmm.